awesome stuff. Good job, guys. Thank you so much. How can a, a guy not get motivated to preach the word of God after a worship like that this morning? Now, let's give Alex and the band a hand for uh, this morning. This morning. Awesome stuff. Well, good morning and welcome to Life Coast Church. So excited to have you guys here. As uh, Pastor Mike said, my name is Brian Kingsley. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Life Coast Church and just so happy, so excited to have you here this morning. So excited that I get to be the one who brings the last message of 2015. Hard to believe that it's uh, coming to an end and a new year's about to begin. But this is really such a great time for us as a church, such a great season for us as a church. Uh, if you were here last Sunday and you were here again with us on Thursday night uh, and here again today, that is three messages in eight days. So as a, as a church body, it's just such an, an awesome thing that we get to come together and, and celebrate in the Lord uh, and just dig deeper into his word. So I know a lot of you guys are hungry this morning. That's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to jump right into God's word. We're going to open up to Nehemiah. It's in the Old Testament right in between the book of Ezra and Esther. We're going to jump into Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to be starting at verse 1. If you don't have a Bible and you need a Bible, you can raise your hands and somebody will bring a Bible down to you. Uh, we'll also have it overhead so you can follow along there or follow along on your smartphones. So here we go. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 1 says, All the people assembled as one man in the square before the water gate. They told Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded for Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women and all, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud from daybreak till noon as he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, women, and others who could understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Jumping over to verse 9, it says, Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, the Levites who were instructing the people said to them all, This day is sacred to the Lord our God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people had been weeping as they listened to the word of the law. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So as Pastor Mike mentioned this morning and staying with the season, what I'd like to talk to you about this morning is this topic of joy. How do we maintain the spirit of joy or how do we build this wall of joy in our lives? You know, it's hard to believe that the no month of November has come and passed, uh, a time, a season where we focus on the emotions of being thankful and giving thanks. And right here in our own church at the end of the month, you had a, some of you had a chance to stand up and celebrate and enjoy the, the victories, the, the accomplishments, the relationships in your lives through the grace of God. We follow that, of course, with the month of December where the whole focus is on this emotion of joy as we celebrate the day that joy came into the world, the day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born. Now December is quickly coming to an end and the new year is approaching us, 2016, where a lot of us have a, a lot of high expectations of what's to come. If we're honest with ourselves, some of us are going to set some New Year's resolutions that we're probably not going to keep. Don't forget we do have the 21-day fast coming up as well. And some of you crazy religious people will decide to fast from food for 21 days. So with that in mind, how do you plan to keep a spirit of joy? How do you plan to build a wall of joy? I don't go to the gym and work out because I like to torture myself. I don't attempt to go for runs with my wife and try to keep up with her because I like the pain. I do it because I enjoy food. So how, with all these high expectations and the things to come in your life, do you plan to build a wall of joy, to celebrate a spirit of joy every day? As we start out with reading the book of Nehemiah this morning, we see a group of people, the Israelites, who have gathered together celebrating in joy after they had just finished building the walls of Jerusalem. And as I read this portion of Scripture this morning, I realize for many of us that this isn't a season of joy. For some of us, you know, we step back and we see other people celebrating the victory of joy, and inside we die a little bit. We die longing to be able to experience the same joy that we see them celebrating in. Sometimes we get a little bit jealous 
And unfortunately, some of us have succumbed to this mindset of believing that this type of joy in our life is unachievable or that you don't deserve it. Unfortunately, many of us don't see or understand either the work and the labor that many have had to go through in order to build this wall of joy in their life. We don't see the attacks from the enemy that they had to overcome as they built their wall of joy. We don't feel the thirst and the hunger that they had to endure as they labored in the hot sun to build that wall of joy. We don't feel the back breaking labor that they went through or see the, the blisters and the calluses that they developed on their fingers as they stacked brick after brick after brick in order to build that wall of joy in their life. We don't understand sometimes the work and the effort that we have to put into our life daily in order to build this wall of joy. But what I believe in my heart of hearts is if we're willing, if we're willing to put into this work, if we're willing to put in this effort every single day, then I honestly believe in my heart that each and every one of us can wake up every day of our lives and achieve the same kind of joy in our lives. But it takes effort. It takes the initiation. It takes us desiring and being willing to get up every single morning and say to ourselves, today will be a day that I had another brick on my wall of joy and I will refuse to allow the enemy to take one brick from me. I refuse to allow him to take one. How many of us are willing to make that commitment going into the new year, Life Coast? Are you willing? Do you want to do you want to celebrate a day of joy every single day that you wake up? Do you? Before we go any further into this, before we begin to walk through the steps that I believe we need to take in order to celebrate in this emotion of joy every day, I feel there's a few steps or a few things, I, excuse me, a few things I need to define for us, a few things that we need to understand. And the first one is this. If we're going to commit to building a wall of joy in our lives, then we have to understand that it's going to take some work on our part. Those walls aren't just going to pop up in our lives. We're going to have to make a commitment. Some days aren't going to be easy. Some days we're going to want to throw in the towel. Some days our backs are going to hurt. Our fingers are probably going to bleed. But we have to stay persistent. Another thing is that we have to come to an understanding that joy and happiness are not the same thing. Happiness is circumstantial. Happiness is short-lived. Happiness is an emotion that God never intended for us to walk in every day. To believe that we can achieve a constant state of happiness is a deceptive lie from the enemy. The enemy is... Is set out on getting us to believe that happiness can be anything more than circumstantial in our lives. And in doing so, he's able to deceive us. He's able to deceive us from the ability to, to pass that emotion of joy onto other people and partner with God in advancing the kingdom of heaven. In fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 4, it says that there will be a time to weep and a time to laugh. There will be a time to mourn and a time to dance. In God's own words, he is, he is telling us that we will not run around in this world doing the happy dance every day. We're going to have some days that are a little bit rough. We're going to have some days that are tough. And if we're honest with ourselves, we're going to have some days that right down suck. See, when it comes to the idea of joy, joy is a posture of our heart. As we learn from Pastor Mike's message during Thanksgiving, that uh, um, the, uh, the word joy comes from the Greek word kara. I can't say it quite as well as he did. He rolls his R's. I'm not even going to attempt to do that because you guys will start laughing at me. But it's C-H-A-R-A, kara. The word joy comes from the Greek word kara. And it's the root word for the word grace, charis, C-H-A-R-I-S. Joy is both a gift from God as well as response from this gift of God. Through God's grace, we receive this joy. Through God's grace, his kara, or charis, excuse me, we receive this joy, kara. Joy comes from being aware of God's grace and his favor. That, my brothers and sisters, is the kind of joy that we will be building this morning as we build our wall today and each day forward. Join with me in prayer. Father, we thank you 
that this morning we get to come into your presence and that you desire for us to, to know this joy in our heart, a joy that's everlasting and not a circumstantial happiness that is short-lived, God. So this morning, Father, as we grow into your word, as we hear your truths, Father, we just pray that your, that your words pierce into our hearts, God, and that we all walk out of here with a greater understanding of the wall that we need to build in order to share your joy for the world. Amen. Excuse me. So can we build a wall of joy when there's still suffering in our lives, when there's hurt in our lives, when there's loss? Remember I said happiness and joy are not the same thing. Happiness is something that is temporary. It's those things in this life that bring forth no eternal satisfaction. Happiness are those false things that the enemy tries to get us to believe in order to distract us from the true joy, the joy that is within us. Happiness will not last, but joy is eternal and it is in you. And the enemy will try to steal this joy from us daily and for a good reason. See, the enemy knows that he can't take our salvation. See, in John chapter 6, verses 37 through 39, Jesus tells us, all that the Father has given me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. He says, I shall lose none, not a one, of all that he has given me, but raise them up in the last day. For those of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, nothing, nothing can snatch us from the hands of God. Nothing can take us away from his grasp. You've been given eternal life, a gift, a gift, a promise that cannot be taken away. And the enemy knows this, and because of this, he hates you for it. That is why he hates you for it, and that's why every day, Every day he will attempt to steal this joy from you because he knows that he cannot steal your salvation, but he knows that if he can, limit, it, he can uh, uh, limit your effectiveness to spread the, this joy, he can he limit your ability to partner with God in advancing the kingdom of heaven. So how do we prevent this? How do we build a wall of joy in our lives that will last? The first step is this. The first step in order to building a wall of joy in our life that will last is we need to build, that building a wall of joy requires a solid foundation. A solid foundation. And in order, to, in order to know this joy and to build a wall of joy around us, we must first know the terrain, the surface or the, the foundation, so to speak, that we are building this wall of joy on. You know, just last week, uh, my family and I, we took a trip up to the Smoky Mountains, and as we did, as we were driving uh, through the through the mountain area, I noticed, began to notice the architectural designs of the roadways. And where they had cut the mountain away in order to build a road going through, they had built these huge walls right up against the mountain. Not claiming to be an expert in this, but having done just enough, enough research to apply this to my message this morning, I learned that they had built these walls to prevent the mountain from breaking away and falling on people as they drive by. It's pretty impressive if you think about it. They built these walls to hold back the constant prog progression of the mountain as it attempts to push for forward and fall on those who drive by. In order for us to build a wall of joy such as this, just like those walls that had to be built on a solid foundation, we too must start with building our walls on a solid foundation in order to hold back those mountains in our own lives that continuously press in against us. Daily, we must first come to the understanding of the foundation that we need to build our walls on. The truth is, is we all have mountains in our lives. Pastor Mike, he has mountains in his lives. Pastor Jeff, he has mountains in his lives. I have, I have mountains in my life. I like to believe that Pastor Josh has mountains in his life too, but he probably just runs through them head first anyways. But the truth is, we all have mountains. We all have mountains in our lives and they're constantly pressing in against us. But we can, can, we can sustain through this pressure, but it starts with us building a wall of joy on a foundation that will not shift, that will not give away to the pressures of those mountains in our lives. It begins with us building our walls on the foundation of eternal hope that has been promised to us and provided by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth, 
of a living hope, something greater through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen? This is the very beginning for the foundation of the wall that we are attempting to build. It's coming to the understanding that we have a hope. We have something greater than the trials and the tribulations that we face in this world against the, the suffering, the loss, the hurts, the hardships. We have something greater. It's a hope and eternity with our Father and the kingdom of heaven where we celebrate and joy and rejoice every day without any suffering. Do you hear me, Life Coast? Are you hearing it? We have an eternal hope. That's something to celebrate in this morning. You guys aren't celebrating. Come on, we need some celebration. I'm standing up here preaching about joy, and you're not ready to celebrate. we got to celebrate in the eternal hope that has been promised to us. The gift has been given to us, and the great thing is we didn't have to do anything for it. You guys just got gifts for Christmas, but you did something. You gave gifts in return. You didn't do nothing for this gift. We have reason to celebrate in this because it's by the grace of our Father. And this is what Jesus was saying to us in John chapter 6, right before he tells us that nothing, nothing will take us from his grasp. In John chapter 6, 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirst. See, until we come to a, a true understanding of what it is that drives our desires and fills us full of true joy, we will always long for more in this world. As long as we are striving to fulfill these emotions of happiness, we will always desire more, never feeling satisfied, never satisfying the desires of our heart. You know, it's really a simple concept. It really is. It's such a simple concept. God has created us for his desires and will, not for our desires and will. But unfortunately, along the way, the world has lost the truth of this concept. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was watching uh, Sunday football, and the Jaguar commercial came on TV. I'm not talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars, but the vehicle, the car. Now, some of you guys may be a fan of this car, and I'm not trying to uh, um, say anything that's bad about being, you know, buying a car like this, but it was the contents of the commercial. And in the commercial, it says, because you deserve to have people look at you this way. That's, that's the world that we have succumbed to. See, sin entered the world, and the enemy was given the freedom to roam freely, filling it full of deception. Filling it full of deception in order to cloud our visions of the true desires of our hearts, which brings forth the foundation of joy that cannot be taken away. And I don't want to lose you in this part of the message. I don't want you to, to, to wrap your minds completely around this, but just know this. God has always been in control of this story from day one. From day one, he has always had the perfect plan in place. And it's for us to come to a true relationship with him despite the chaos of this world. In order that we may understand the true joy and not just circumstantial emotions of happiness. This is the first step to building a wall of joy in our lives. It's developing a foundation of faith on Christ our Savior, who is perfect enough through his divinity to bear our sins. That is the strength that holds our wall of joy up against the pressures of this world. The mountains of grief, of depression, of loss, of doubts, of failures. They'll always be there. They'll always press against us. And unless we build our wall of joy on a foundation that was built on the one who promised to never let us slip through his fingers, every time this world presses against our walls, it will fall and crumble to the ground. Step one, the first step of building a wall of joy in our life is to build it on the foundation of Calvary, to build it on the foundation of the cross. The one whose, whose love was great enough for you to die on the sin, to give you a gift without anything in return. To begin to build our wall of joy, we must build our wall on the foundation of God's love. That is the first step. The second step is this, is the build, building a wall of joy takes action, takes action. Through his mercy, we have been given a new life to do something with now, not just something to sit back and view as a future inheritance. It's true that Christ's death on the cross was to restore the broken relationship between God and his creation, but it wasn't a gift that was given to us for them to sit back like we're all hanging out in one giant waiting room, just waiting for our number to be called. He promises us eternity 
of a blessing to come in heaven, but he desires for us to walk in this blessing today as his sons and daughters of action, living a life not of our own will, but of his will. That is the example that Jesus set for us as he lived a life of the Father's will. I want you to turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 15, verse 9. John chapter 15, verse 9. This is a a major portion of Scripture as Jesus is speaking to us. He says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. As we can clearly see from this portion of scripture this morning, joy is the product of action. And that action is the action of love. In Galatians chapter 5, 22, we learn that the first fruit of the spirit is love. It's no coincidence that the second fruit of the Spirit to follow the Spirit of love is joy. We cannot experience true joy without first experience His love. And God doesn't keep this a secret from us, nor does He expect us to keep this a secret. See, joy is the byproduct of the love that requires action on our part. An action of being part of God's will and his truth, not only for our our lives, but for the lives of others as well. It requires for us to obey his commands. There's a cool thing about it. He knows. He knows it's not easy for us in this world. He knows that it's not easy for us to endure the hardships of this world because he experienced it for us as well. I'd like for you to remember the posture of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. As he got down on his knees and he prayed to God, he prayed to his father, Lord, take this cup from me. Down on his knees, praying so earnestly, it says that drops of sweat began to drip from his brow and hit the ground like blood. And it says an angel appeared before him and strengthened him. Do you remember what we read in Nehemiah? Chapter 8, verse 10, tells us our joy comes from the strength of the Lord. Let me tell you something. There is an angel. There is an angel standing in the front of each and every one of us, ready to give you the strength in order that you may receive the joy in your life that he desires for you. But guess what? It takes action on your part. You have to tap into that to that strength. Every single day when your feet hit the ground, you have to be willing to get up and say, you know what? Today is the day that I will add another layer of bricks to my wall of joy. I will refuse to allow the enemy to take one brick, one brick from me. But you have to tap into the strength. Every single day, you have to get up on your feet. You have to tap into the presence of that angel that stands before each and every one of us and draw closer to this strength. He has laid the foundation for you, but it takes action on your part. With this understanding of what Christ went through for us leading up to the cross, I want to redirect you back to John 15. And I want you to take notice of something here. In verse 10, I want, you to, I want you to notice the past and present tense that Jesus uses in this particular portion of Scripture as he says, I obeyed my Father's command. Now understand that John 15 happens before Jesus went to the cross, but what we need to understand is that Jesus' eyes, they were always fixed on the cross. He always knew his mission. From day one, he knew what his job was. He knew he was meant to bear the burden of that cross from day one. In this particular portion of scripture, he says, I obeyed my father's command, past tense, and I remain in his love, present tense. An action. An action creating a carryover of a reaction of love. Why? So his joy may rest in us. It begins with the foundation of what he did for us so that we may know and receive, but it then calls for us to create a repetitive motion of this action. 
Can you see the awesomeness of God's plan? God understands the grief, the loss, the suffering that we'll face in this world. He understands how hard it will be for us. But he wants us to understand, too, that when we partner with him, when we, we receive his love that brings forth true joy, it's so much greater than the loss and sufferings that we face in this world. But we have to obey. Building a wall of joy requires action. We have to follow his command. So what, what is his command? What is Jesus' command for us? It's simple. In John 15, 12, he says, to love each other as I have loved you. How did he love us? He loved us through selflessness, through dying on the cross for us. He continues on to say, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. The human aspect of Christ obeying God's command of selflessness was just as real for him as it is for you and I. By obeying God's command, Jesus served the world through his death. He, demonstra he demonstrated the ultimate example of love for the world through selfless love. Laying down his life for his friends. Does this mean that in order for us to remain in God's love, to remain in his love, and receive his joy, that we too must be sacrificed like Christ on the cross? No. Of course not. We can't, nor do we need to. One death. One death to atone for all the world. Amen? But he has set an example. An example that we need to follow. An example of dying to our own selves internally. His command is this. Out of our love for him, we are to die to ourselves daily. We are to die to the, the selfish desires of the temporal things of this world that bring forth circumstantial happiness. We are, cannot, we are not commanded to a physical death like Christ, but to a, a fleshly death of our inner desires. This is what we are commanded to do out of love for our friends. This is the, the mortar that holds our bricks in place as we build our wall of joy. It's an action of love through selfishness that creates a reaction of joy in our own hearts. The first fruit of the Spirit that brings forth love is the initiation that brings forth the second fruit of the Spirit, joy. What do I mean by this? When we receive the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that transformational love that transforms our hearts and our minds, we no longer become concerned about our own selfish desires and needs, but more concerned about the desires and needs of others. And we begin to pour that love out in others. And when we begin to serve out of this love, when we begin to put other people's needs, their desires and their wants before our own needs and desires, that is when we tr receive true joy and happiness in our life. The second step of building a wall is, this, is the step of action. It's understanding what he has done for us so that we may de then deposit this joy back into a broken world. It's understanding that joy comes from an attitude of gratitude. Our joy cannot be, be complete if we are living a life that is self-centered. If we're living a life that's all about us, we become self-absorbed, believing such sayings that if I can only do this, if I only can accomplish this, if I can only achieve this, then I will be satisfied. The truth is joy comes not by what we receive, but what we give. The second step of building a wall of joy is a reaction to his action, a reaction to his love. Step three, our final step in building a wall of joy is to hire some hands. Hire some hands. Get some people to help you. When Nehemiah set out to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, he knew that this was something that he couldn't do on his own. The first thing he did was begin to organize the families of Israel in order for them to work together and begin to rebuild this wall together. When it comes to us building a wall of joy in our own lives, it's the same thing. See, God never intended for us to build a wall of joy on our own. In fact, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, it tells us to carry each other's burdens. And it's so cool how all of God's words 
fit together. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, we read that the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. In John 15, we read that through God's love and remaining in his love, we receive this joy. This joy, this strength is then contingent on God's love. Remember, it's his love for us that first developed the foundation that we're building this wall of joy on. In Matthew 23, an expert of the law comes up to Jesus and says, what's the greatest commandment in the law? What does Jesus say back to him? To love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and the second is like it. To love your neighbor as yourself. It's the same theme all throughout from the beginning to end. From the book of Genesis to the book of Re Revelation, it's the same theme. It's the theme of love, of God's love for his people, to restore his people. The building of the wall of joy is an action of, the, of, of repetitiveness of this love for others. It's an example, of the, of the selfless example that our Savior set for us on the cross. It isn't about us, but about others, loving others. This is Jesus' command to us in John 15, to die to our own selfishness and live for others, to carry each other's burdens. This is the selflessness of putting others' desires before our own, not only to build our own walls, but to help build the walls of others. A wall of joy that connects each of us together in order that we may be able to stand and hold back the pressures of those mountains that the enemy constantly tries to drive in on us in our lives daily. Together as a body of believers, man, we can build a wall that is so high, a wall that is so strong, a wall that is so great and so mighty, built on the foundation of God's love, held together by the actions of selflessness and stacked on the faith of a body of believers that are willing to pick up brick after brick after brick, no matter how hard it is. Together as a body of believers, I mean, we can build a wall that is so great that no, no matter how much darkness looms over this world, together we can build a wall that is so high that reveals God's greatness, His glory, His love for all the world to see. Are you willing to do this, Life Coast? Are you willing to work together in order to build a wall of joy that is so much greater than the darkness of this world? Are you willing, Life Coast? That doesn't sound like anybody's willing this morning. Are you willing to work together to build a wall of joy that will last? Because you don't seem like it. I tell you what, God's grace and his glory is great. And it starts with us in here. The world's out there outside those doors and the enemy is real. And he wants to destroy your joy. He wants to steal your joy. But in here, we can start to build a wall of joy that we can take out into the world. Are you with me this morning, Life Coast? Because it don't sound like anybody's with me this morning. If you're with me, then give God some praise this morning. Because it's real. Do you want to build a life of joy, Life Coast? Do you want that joy in your life? Because it starts today. It starts now. Nehemiah knew. He knew as he was talking to the people of Israel that we have to come together. Yes, we have to come together. We talk about it all the time about you need to get involved in one-on-one -on -one discipleship. You need to get involved with accountability partners. You need to get involved in growth groups and life groups. That's true. You need to do that because that's where we build our spiritual walls. That's where we grow in God's word and his truth. But he also knew that there was so much more to it. He also knew that we were supposed to do life together. Look what he says in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. He tells him, go and enjoy cho choice food and sweet drinks and send, to send some to those who have nothing. It's all about us coming together. What does that look like? What does that look like? That looks like us doing life together. Not just coming in here, getting pumped up through, through worship and God's word and then leaving and, and going out in our week and doing the same thing until next Sunday. No, it's doing life together. Bringing our families together, laughing together, crying together, having barbecues together, enjoying, enjoying food and sweet drinks, having barbecue ribs and lemonade. Doing life together. You guys are getting excited about food. You guys know the fast is coming up. That's why. Listen, standing, standing alone, our wall will break and crumble to the ground. But together, interlocked as a, as, as a body of believers, as brothers, sisters in Christ, we can build a wall that stands strong, resisting the pressures of this world, those mountains that the, the enemy continues to try to drive into our lives in order to, to steal our joy. Standing together, life close to the bodies of believers, we can build a wall together. A wall that's so strong that holds back 
the arsenal of the enemy as he continues to take shots at us every single day. The attacks are real. He doesn't want you to celebrate in joy. Because if you celebrate in joy, then you're advancing the kingdom of heaven. He can't take your salvation. Christ holds you in his hands. The very hand of God holds you in me. Nothing in this world's greater than that hand. And he can't take you from that hand. But he can steal your joy. And if he can steal your joy, then he can affect your ability to partner with God. I got a New Year's resolution for each and every one of us this morning. How about this? And how, instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to fast from food. I'm going to eat a little bit more healthy this year. I'm going to exercise a little bit more. I'm going to be a little nicer. How about instead of any of that, how about we do this? Because I guarantee you this will change everything in your life. How about every morning when you wake up, as soon as your feet hit the ground, you say to yourself, I am going to add another layer of bricks to my wall of joy. And no matter what the enemy tries to do to me, I won't give him one brick. Not one. How about that for a New Year's resolution? And so we need to ask ourselves this morning, are we building a wall of joy in our life or is our life a mess? As you look at your, at your life this morning, are there bricks laying all around your feet? Or do you have an army of brothers and sisters in Christ partnering with you, helping you to, to build that wall of joy in your life? As you take a look down the line of your, of your wall this morning, do you see some places in your wall where maybe your, your, your wall is kind of bowing or, or leaning to one side because you've been building your wall on a foundation of, sh of shifting sand? Have you been building your life on a rock? A rock that cannot be moved. A rock that cannot be shaken. Listen, for 30 years of my life, for 30 years, I'm 38 years old for another month. For 30 years of my life, I built walls on shifting sands, on circumstantial happiness. Maybe some of you are like me this morning. As you built those walls on shifting sand, there were some people that walked by and your walls crumbled and fell on them. And you're thinking to yourself, you know what? How can a God who loves so greatly forgive me and the things I have done? You need to understand today, there is nothing in this world that you can do that is greater than God. That's greater than God's love for you. Nothing you did before, nothing you did today, nothing you can do tomorrow can steal God's greatness. That can diminish God's love. And if God's love is so great and his forgiveness is so great that he says he forgives you, then who are we to ever question God's greatness and his forgiveness and not forgive ourselves? You can forgive yourselves today. You can begin to build your wall on the foundation of God's love. A rock that will not shift. A rock that will not give away as you stack brick after brick in your life. It begins with you taking action of receiving his love, partnering with God and fellow believers in Christ in order to stack those bricks. I'm going to ask you guys to join me in prayer this morning, but I'm not going to ask you to stand up on your feet like we normally do. I'm going to ask you to stay right where you are as I pray this morning. And the reason being is because where you are at right now is that much closer to the position that Christ was in as he sat in the garden to bear our sins. And if you're here this morning you've been struggling with the fact that you've been building walls on shifting sand, you feel you need to get down on your knees as we pray this morning, then you get down on your knees. Because God's love is that great for you. And there is an angel standing in front of each and every one of us, ready to give you a solid foundation to build your wall on. If you're here this morning, I'm going to ask for everybody to close your eyes, bow your heads. And if you're here this morning and you have, you have never received that solid foundation that God has laid for you, and you want to receive it today, you want to begin to build real walls of joy in your life, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Raise your hand and accept us to receive that from God today. 
If you're here this morning and you're looking at your wall, you're looking down the, the, the line of your wall and you notice your wall has been given way in certain areas and you started out on a solid foundation, but today your foundation isn't as solid as it was when you started and you want to you wanna rebuild your wall on a solid foundation, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand this morning. Raise your hand and receive that solid foundation that, that he has offered for you. Join me in prayer this morning. God, we thank you. We thank you because the gift, the gift was free. We didn't have to do anything to receive it. Eternity, a hope in heaven with you, God. We come before you this morning, Lord, and we realize that we have been building our wall on the wrong foundation. God, forgive us. We ask to receive your solid foundation today, God. To re receive your solid foundation in our hearts. To be the rock that we build our wall on this day. This day and this day forward so that we may begin to build a wall of joy. A wall of joy in our life that repels any arsenal that the enemy may try to swing at us. Because God, when we walk in your joy, not only does it satisfy the desires of our hearts, God, but we receive the blessing of passing that joy on to others. That's where joy comes from. Thank you, Father. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the foundation that you lay in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please get up on your feet, Life Coasts, as we celebrate and enjoy the presence of our great and mighty God who laid the foundation.